Hello everybody and welcome back to another Sota tutorial and in today's video I'm gonna be um no, just it. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Sota tutorial um, I got a message on one of my previous videos from someone called Regina asking if I can show them how to draw some raccoons so in today's video we will be going through step by step how you at home can draw stylized illustration focused raccoons so um yeah, sit back, grab your pen and pencil, and let's go through the processes. The first thing that we're going to start off with the raccoon is just um, a squashed oval shape. Just like this. Once that is in place, I'm then going to draw two center lines, just where you want the face to be facing. So here, we're going to have it facing off into this direction. So here, I'm putting a center line bent towards this direction here. If I was going to face it down this way, I'd bend the shape there. Now it's facing more downwards. Likewise, if upwards, I would face it up ways, and then they'd be facing this way. But we're focused on this one today, just one angle. Um, and then you can just repeat, repeat the process to create completely different characters each way. Um, from here, I'm also drawing another center line going across the face. And once again, depending on how you have it, you can be facing up. And this nose will be more up, or you can have it down by having it down. But here we just keep it quite straight and level. Just because you're more of a straight profiled face, um, it's easier to learn, starting off simple, and then you get more complex as you go. Uh, for this, you put the center line in place. Um, we're going to start off with the right eye here. Here, just draw a circle, uh, circle like so, just because you've got a good placement. And that's in this box, so if we number the boxes of sections, you've got one, two, three, four. Here in the fourth on the bottom, sitting on the line, you put a circle. And over on this one here, I'm also going to draw another circle, putting it in place. Um, just like so. These don't stay like this, this is just a good indication of where I'm going to keep the eyes, um, which I can add to later on. For the nose, I'm just going to put a small X, just as a placement marker. Because uh, it's facing the audience, it's going to have a bit of dimension to it. And also just going to put a box like this. And like I said, that's it. I'm not looking for detail just yet. I'm looking just to put the right placements um, in order. So then when I start putting the more detailed expression, I've got a good base to work on. For the face itself, I'm just going to draw another line, make it more like a rugby ball shape here following that starting shape and depending on the starting shapes you actually have really influences on how the end design will turn out so if you want more of a long face obviously you'd start off with more of a, a rectangular shape as opposed to this sort of rugby ball squash oval shape once that's in place I'm going to start looking for a kind of expression and for this I think I'm going to have one eye sort of squinted so here, there's two folds to the eyes. You've got the eyelids, that's the top half and the bottom half. And you can use both to really exaggerate an expression. So here, if I just put this in place, I'll just get a darker pencil for you guys so you can see it a little bit easier on the camera. So here, if I work on the bottom half, so here I'm having it sort of squinted up like this. Just put a line across the circle, but the circle's gonna remain there, and you're gonna build upon the original circle. And then the eye lash, I'm gonna put at the top here. And this is why I like to do illustrations because you can really start breaking the rules from real life. You don't have to focus so much on um, making it realistic. So there's a lot more room to play around, I find, but you still have to learn the basic structures first. Um, and then it becomes more relaxed as you learn and get more comfortable with what you like and what you don't like. Um, as for the bottom, start that circle, so you've got to imagine it's under the skin. I'm going to put it so you see a little bit, and then obviously the cheek. And here I'm working on the eye, now I just know I've got a basic foundation of where the face is going. And the top circle, imagine the eye is still there, like an eyeball, and then you have the eyelid, and then an eye, the eyebrow coming under. Still keeping it loose and very really playful, just playing with, the, playing with the image, playing with the artwork. Um, yeah, not trying too hard. Uh, I've learned something recently that I've been doing my own artwork is um, 
sometimes if you have too much thought before, well, I'd, let me know actually in the comments if you feel the same. If you're going to do a drawing and you have a lot of thought going in beforehand, like I, it needs to look exactly like this. The drawing itself doesn't come out nowhere near as good, whereas if you just sort of go with it, um, that's something I've realised lately. It's sometimes I have an image in mind I want to create and it doesn't come out as well, but if I just draw and let it come out, I end up drawing something way better than I would have if, um, if I planned it, which is quite, quite unusual. Um, anyway. Here I just put in small indications of shading, just to accentuate the folds. Keeping some loose lines. Um, and we'll leave it like that for now. Next up, I'm now going to walk on this eye, but I want to keep this eye open. And this is what I said earlier about with like animation or illustration, it's way more exaggerated. So here, I can have it, this one wide open, and this eye completely different, and it still will look out of place. Um, so here I'm just going to get a slight shade around the eye, a small indication so the eye now looks sinking into the face. Just these two little lines here can give it way more dimension, so here I'm just using that to my advantage. Pulling it around, um, and then put like a, just a bit of shading so I can show you guys. Okay. Now for the nose, once I've got that shape in place, this sort of um, square-like shape, I'm then going to look to put the nose, and you can sort of guess the nose is going to be. It's going to be around here, and here's just a small triangle for now like that and what I like to do is I really like, like to use the shading for the nose to really uh, accentuate it so here I just do the small C with a little C there and then shade downwards and as I'm going down I'm getting lighter 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 like so and then I just add this small tick that way and that's just the basic basic shape of the nose and now you can start to see it looks uh, like an animal now a lot more than it did so maybe like two minutes ago one of the coolest things with like a raccoon, that makes it look like a raccoon, is the facial markings. And these, this is where it gets really playful. Here I'm coming from the nose. And I'm going to keep it so it sort of comes up there. Maybe it has like a X on the forehead. Um, you can do yours however you like. And then I'm going to have it so it comes across like a mask almost. Yeah, something like that. I can rework on it in a second, just like so. And here for this side of the face, I'm literally going to draw a line. Where this line sort of ticks off, I'm looking to sort of bring this one across. So I'm bringing it back in, like this. And here we might give it a cool element. Let's give it a hat. Um, I get a longer pencil for this, so the lines are a bit looser. And I'm just going to draw this bar sitting up here. This will be the fold of the hat, like a beanie hat. Um, then I can just work some folds up here. Just like that. Really quick. Just giving it a close as well to a cat that sort of gives it a real strong human element. And then obviously a few strands of hair coming off from the hat. And for the cheek bit here, I like to do the hair coming outwards. So here I just do small ticks. Sticking to the original face, but I'm just sort of doing these small uh, little flicks of hair. For the mouth area itself, I'm going to kind of do more of a loose shape, so here, I'm going to sort of give an indication of the top of the mouth in two parts, so here will be the top, now, and then the bottom is going to be here, connected to that, so here I'm just going to draw a thin layer, like so, and then coming back to this sort of uh, area. Just like that, still keeping a lot of loose lines, keeping it playful. Um, 
yeah. Just gonna do some small ticks for the teeth. Um, and then just a few dots around the mouth. And a couple of whiskers. And here I can start to build on the face mask but furthermore. So I'm bringing this down, might bring that in, keep it loose. And the same goes um, up here. Keep more of that face shape, round it off. And yeah, to keep building, keep playing with it. Just like so. Really cool looking character. I think he looks, uh, yeah. I like the look of him. Depending on you, whether you want to make it more of a human, you can add the eyebrows. So here you can have, I'll just do it anyway because we had the example of right eyebrows, so just a little extra. Um, here you can just do these small tick shapes, like one there, and this one I can push down using that to really accentuate this eye. Like so. And a few more little folds, just to show the fold of the expression. Just around the eye. Starting to build up. As you see, it's starting to come together just bit by bit. So take your time with it. Um, look for where you want to keep your shapes. And yeah, keep building. Here is the other ear, an ear going to be. So for that, it's just going to be a triangle. And you can see already, by learning how to draw stuff like raccoons or other animals, you can start looking for how you could draw cats. This is quite similar features to a cat. Um, may have to change your nose a bit, a few other features on the body, but yeah, it gets that easy. And here I'm going to stick with that rugby shape, so for now I'm just going to bring it around. And from here, now I'm looking to put just the end of the fur. Just these ticks, back again. like so. Just add a bit more to the hat now, make it sort of sitting more realistic on the head. Maybe if you have your own company or an own brand or your name, put your own name on the hat. That's always a cool little touch. Like an easter egg for a lot of people. But yeah, I just want, really want to make sure you're enjoying the process a lot more. Um, keeping it playful. And these tutorials, obviously, they're one of images and stuff, but I'm just trying to break down the processes to help you understand how it's getting broken down and um, hopefully give you some insight to how you build up a character of your own. Especially if you do graffiti for a wall, and let's just say for example you had this character and you had a letter here, bam, you could put an S straight up there. Character, piece, and it works, um, it works fine. And that's the way my characters have always been, because it uh, comes from a strong graffiti background. And here, continue the mask, the mask-like look. Just add that how you want, add a few small circles, like a bubble effect on a piece. You just want to add a few small bits. Sometimes less can be more. Just do the ear. And the ear is just these little C's that come around. Draw some hair inside. And here we can just have some kind of thought bubble, which we'll figure later. Like so, it's coming together. Um, once the head's in place, I'm then going to start working on the body. So for here, I'm, I'm looking to see where the neck will fit. So the neck will go here. And let's just have the body coming outwards today. Let's keep it quite simple. So here I'm just going to focus on drawing the spine, so keep a loose line. Going across, and then you're going to. I'm going to start drawing the top of the torso. So here's the top. Once the top's in place, before I start working on the bottom or anything else, I work on the hands. So here we're going to say we put our hands here. There's a whole tutorial on my uh, channel on how I draw hands, but for now I'm going to do this rectangle shape, a real quick one, and then work with the fingers. So let's just do like one finger here. Just do like the two fingers. 
And here we have the little finger coming up too. And I'm actually gonna have these folded out. out. Just like so. And like I said, there's a full tutorial. If you wanna know how to draw it really in depth, there is a video. Uh, on the on the YouTube channel, if you're struggling with hands, but I'm gonna keep this one quite simple today. And once the hands in place, I'm then dropping the forearm, and then I'm looking to connect it to the body. So that's one. I'm actually gonna have him holding something here. And for the second, I think about it here. Here I'm going to draw like a diamond shape. I'm going to play around the shapes. Finger one. The same thing. Once you get hands down, honestly, it's so much fun. Two fingers together, I'm going to keep the same kind of. And maybe just have the little finger like facing down. So it's not as. Not as big. There we go, one, two, three. I'm gonna draw a forearm again, keeping these two loose lines connecting to each other. And then connecting that to the top half of the body we put down. Just like so. Here I'm actually gonna change the forearm. Keep it so it's going back. Just like that. And now we've got that, I'm gonna set out the back. So here the tail is gonna be, and for the tail, the tail is a really cool shape because you can keep the lines really loose. Um, here I'm gonna have it so the tail's actually coming more in the foreground, so it's over, overcoming the body. Like so. Just keep a big tube shape for now. Nothing too crazy, nothing fancy. And the cool thing with raccoons is obviously the lines that come around, and you can use that to give the tail way more curvature, accentuating it by putting the lines in place. Just like so. Right now there's quite a few messy lines uh, around the place but that's okay because later on we're going to use those lines to um, tidy up the image with a darker pencil. And now here I'm just going to have some shoes, just loosely outlined. Just like that. Um, now you've got the option whether you want it to or not, you could add clothes to him because um, the skeleton is already there. So let's say you want to put a hoodie on. Here we just put a hoodie on him. Keep the arms baggy. You're just following for clothes. You're just following the basic form. 
of the body um, and adding these curves. This is just a very quick one to show you because um, I just really want to focus more on the raccoon's face and um, the, main key, the main key features here. This is coming up to the audience. Okay guys, if you put the lines in, you'll end up with something that looks like this. It's still kind of uh, sketchy and messy, I just want to show you the basic forms, um, the basic shapes basically you can put in place. Um, from here on out, any changes you want to do, you want to be making now with your pencil. Um, anything you want to keep, um, this is what the dark pencil is for, and you want to go over it. For this in its actual self, I'm going to time lapse it so you can see the process of me putting the dark lines in and adding the shading and anything you don't want just don't darken out um, and just try and get rid of with the rubber so yeah guys I'll, guys, I'll talk to you um, in a minute Okay, and right, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been following the processes um, from start to finish, you'll end up with something that roughly looks like this. Don't be too worried if it doesn't look exact. I'd actually probably be more grateful because you have your own unique style and you may think a completely different way to the way I want to pitch something. So go with that and don't, uh, don't go against your natural feeling of where you want to go and where you want to take your own artwork. But yeah, just a few pointers there, how it breaks shapes down. Add the hands, clothes, put all together, and really quick, really easy. Um, you can then create any sort of character you want just by taking the foundations in place. Um, that will be it for today's lesson. If you guys want to see any more tutorials, just let me know in the comment section what you want me to draw and I'll try and explain to you guys how to do to the best of my ability. Um, I need to say a massive thank you to all of you guys who've been tuning in, supporting the channel, and as always to the team over at the Patreon who actually fund these videos and allow me to sit down and create more content for you guys. Um, so yeah, thank you to you all. Uh, totally grateful, and I really mean that. Um, any comments and stuff, let me know. And then um, till next time, peace.